Although now that I am rocking a not only custom facial interface, but even a JBRAC color edition they made just for me, I did say I was gonna keep bringing you reviews on some lower priced ones or some ones that are available outside of the US since this one isn't. So I bought this one on Amazon because they didn't offer to send it to me or anything. Let's check it out. bucks. There is two editions. I actually ordered both editions, but the other one says it's not coming for like a month. The other one is a wider edition. So this is the regular. Apparently very well packed into a box. Globular cluster, magnetic. That's the big draw for me here. Facial interface. I didn't realize it came with a set of grips, which is funny because I actually also have these grips thanks to Eagle Docs 2 already sending me them. So these have already been reviewed. I'll leave a link to that separately. But this facial interface, I was very curious about. Small sharp unboxing knife, you know me. Always keep things safe and sharp. Actually, I say that right now and I really need to take this somewhere and have it sharpened. A couple of years of tape and cardboard and everything nasty is really dulling that down. The box looks premium, the black and gold. It looks nice. They're setting me up for an experience here of hoping. And actually, I ordered both editions and the only one that came in so far is the wider one, not the standard. I thought this was the standard. So we're gonna start with the wide one, which is technically meant for elite straps. I keep calling these wider, which is kind of bugging me. It's taller, it's not wider, but okay. One, two, three. I gotta say for 40 bucks, you get a lot. Four, five. Six. So basically what you've got, you've got your initial install piece. This goes on your Quest, and in theory, this never comes off again. This now upgrades you to that premium Apple style feel or Valve Index style feel. And honestly, it looks pretty damn good even. The lines on it just like look nice. I feel like it matches it. So now when you wanna play a sweaty game that you want something that's gonna absorb that sweat and keep it out of your eyes. Okay, it's not, it's not the strongest of magnets. It does go in, but a tricky thing they did. Okay, no, stay in the quest. They added these little nubbins to make it slide in exactly the right spot. But what I'm seeing is happening sometimes is the magnets grab, but the nubbins aren't aligned. So you have to just push and make sure they align. Yeah, it's not the friendliest of designs, but also what's happening is it keeps coming back out of my damn quest. Okay, stay in this time. Okay, so far I'm not in love with the with the magnetic design. It's not bad, it's just not, I thought it would be like hard, strong magnet that would always fall into place. You kind of like guide it and then you jiggle it around till it goes in the hole. And even then, I don't feel like I have the whole thing aligned right. Even when I really work to align it, there's still a little bit of like gaps you can see in the edges. So what's happening right now, if you have put a couple of facial interfaces into the Quest 3, you're gonna be familiar with what I'm talking about. The Quest 3, when you go to put a facial interface on, it's a little rough, you have to push a little bit it, and everything eventually snaps into place. But what that means is if it's not perfectly modeled to your Quest 3, which even could probably vary a little bit between plastic variations, this piece that's in there right now might be tweaking just a wee bit to snap in. Turning a little bit, bending a little bit, whatever. What that is causing is now when I go to put this in, it has that slight bit of tweak. It means not everything is aligning as perfectly as it did as when I had it not connected to the Quest 3 and they just snapped together perfectly. It's not a horrible fault of it. I'm not saying that's a deal breaker yet, but it's just, I'm noticing that in putting it on and off that it's not, it's not going as perfectly as it did when it wasn't attached to the Quest. So like, see, I put this on and even just trying to like move the front around, it's doing this number because it's not all snapped in like hard. It's not holding on really good. Okay, okay. We're having a, we're off to a rough start here. Let's try this one. I like magnets. I just feel like you guys could have put in stronger and more of them. I'm feeling defeated already. All right, take a look at this. One, two, three main magnetic zones. You would think the bottom would have them, but no, it's just got nubbin holes all around it. So when you go to snap these together, the nubbins are there, but ultimately besides that, there's nothing really holding the bottom here. I mean, I can wiggle it, I can jiggle it. And that's why when it's in the headset now, you add the little bit of bending and tweaking that's happening to it. And now it's not wanting to stay as a line. It's funny that they're talking about this being the wider one that's gonna work better with the other straps. The only real width is in the freaking padding. Like the padding is way wider, but it's not like the plastic that's actually gonna support the weight on your face is wider. Look at that pad though. That is the fattest, thickest pad right there. Ugh, same thing even already with this. I can just, it's nice, you can pop your headset up. <laughs> Uh, let me get an elite strap on this thing really quick and we will continue. We'll bring back one I liked. How about an Avica one? 
a battery-less optical one. No, no, this is the pink one though. I don't wanna, I don't wanna assemble that. There we go, blue. This is not a standard issue clip. That's something I've hung on to to make swapping straps easier. It's frustrating me that I'm running into problems already because this thing looks so nice. Like you look at it and it's got all these vents in it. It looks like it's well-designed. It looks like it's well-engineered. It looks premium. And in hand, it feels pretty good until the magnets don't hang on for crap. Right there even, I go to put it on and when I go to tighten it, this, this keeps doing this number. Why didn't they just put one more magnet in the bottom? That, that would annoy the crap out of me. <laughs> Every time you go put this on and then it's like doing that, you tighten it down. What if you throw all the glasses spacers in there? Does it work better then? So it's got two sets of spacers, works on the same principles. It's got more magnets in the same spots. It's got more nubbins in the same spot. So you just keep extending it out as far as you want to. And you look at that, I mean, those all look like they're aligned. They look like they're right. I didn't even, I didn't even put it on yet. There are two models. Remember that I said that. This is the wider one. I'm wondering if it wasn't for the width, if this would be working fine. Because the problem is with the width, you've got more of like a lever kind of happening up here to where you can push your head on that on accident and it's gonna pop it out. So if I had the non-wide one to compare, maybe that one wouldn't be giving me such problems. It's just way too easy to do this. Like every time I'm adjusting the headset moving around, I keep seeing the light pop in because it keeps doing this and coming back in. It's like it's one magnet from being a great product. With all the glasses spaces in there, there's also just plenty of light bleed coming in through the cracks in the top. I feel like I'm already prepared to make a declaration on this one, but I will go play some games just to double check what the heck is happening here. What this makes me want to do is it makes me want to get the standard one, although I think it's gonna be like another month. So I think we'll have to report back in a separate video because that one says on Amazon it's gonna be a long time. I just feel like maybe the standard one wouldn't be doing this so bad because the padding wouldn't be sticking up so far where it's just so easy from the top to disconnect this. Like if I'm pushing down here where the standard one wouldn't be sticking out as far, that doesn't want to come off, but with the standard one, you put any pressure at the very top and it's just, it's too easy for it to pop off. All right, let me go game. Let me play with this for a while and get back at you. We're back. And quick insight for those of you hanging out here while I open this other box up of how things work with this channel. Typically when it comes to reviewing stuff, we'll unbox multiple things at the same time. We get a bunch of stuff in and we'll unbox all of it. I'll take it away days, weeks, sometimes months, depending on how intense of a review a product needs. So while I took the other one away, although Amazon had told me it was gonna be over a month before the standard edition, was delivered, it got delivered. So then I was like, okay, this is perfect because now we can answer all of our unanswered questions we had from the unboxing portion of the wide one by opening up the standard one and comparing it. So it's got delivered like a month early. This is the standard one, which as I suspected, the wider one is only a wider pad, which is kind of funny. So they look like they're two different products, but ultimately you're just getting a different set of pads. It's a little wider. That's meant for the elite ones because that wide pad is supposed to then distribute more of the weight on your forehead. And then the standard was supposed to fit better with halo straps because then you don't have it hitting here and interacting as much. So the standard one should not even have to change out the bracket, should just go in the same way. And as I suspected, it doesn't want to pop off my face as bad because there's not as much room for it to contact up here. Can't tell you why yet, but I'm also getting way less light bleed. You're not gonna get no light bleed. Like if you turn around, there is little cracks still where the things don't perfectly seal. And there's like a good chunk of room, although different nose sizes will vary there. But it feels like the standard one was a thought out product and stays on like it should. And then the wider one was tacked on after the fact. This one in particular, I believe this is the cooling gel one. This one definitely has more lively than any of the others. It's just because that pad is shaped a little differently and it's a little thinner. So it just doesn't reach the sides of my face as well. This reaches my face, this doesn't. It's got that weird kind of almost a hard angle on it. Different face shapes, the mileage will vary. And the second we go back to the wider one, I'm having that same weird problem. The standard one does much better. 
I like it better. It's still not perfect. It's not a perfect product. It still has the same pitfalls of the nubbins and the missing magnets. But if they had only made the standard model and the standard model had one extra thick magnet here or two here, I think this would be a really great facial interface. Even as it stands now, as long as it's the standard one, I am like, oh, you know what? I feel a lot more confident about this. What I do want to see though, is the standard one with a halo style facial interface. I got my old M3 conversion sitting here. Standard does seem to drop in pretty easily. There's enough of a gap right here that if you want to swap them out, it's not, it's not terribly easy, but it doesn't feel like it's going to get in your way nearly as much either. But I definitely feel like of all these, I would use this or the pleather one more because the padding being thicker also just makes it more comfortable. I mean, this feels great with a halo strap. Halo straps are more forgiving as we discussed before because they don't suck all the pressure into the facial interface. So you can get away with less comfortable interfaces, but I mean, I don't feel any pressure points. I would say the difference of the standard to the wide is near night and day. And it's enough of a deal breaker that one, I would say, could be worth buying. You're still gonna get some light bleed. Other facial interfaces have that problem too. That's not only this one. The magnets are nice. I just really hope that Globular Cluster considers adding a couple more magnets and then it would be a, hey, for a budget one versus, you know, my really expensive custom one, it would be a recommend. Well, I'm gonna take a little more time before the final thoughts here because I do wanna actually game test this even though I've been game testing the wide one and I kind of hate it. But the standard one has me thinking there's a possibility still. So I'll be right back. Globular cluster, facial interfaces, $40 wide or regular. Regular, I actually like, especially at $40 price. And the fact that they threw in a set of grips too, it is fitting more of that budget category I was telling you all about versus, you know, something over double that price. It's not perfect still, but the magnets are a nice feature. I just wish they had added two or found a way to add one down here. And then the thing would be damn near perfect. Honestly, I would love if they had the magnets a little bit stronger and they didn't even have the nubbins. Like it just snapped in with magnets and stayed, pulled off with magnets and it stayed. That would be perfect. But as it stands right now versus what's out there in the world, I do like the standard one and I do feel pretty decent about it. You might have some light bleed, every facial interface is a risk. But for me personally, even with a little bit of light bleed, I do find less pressure points coming from this one, even if you're using it with an Elite. Their wider one that is specifically for the Elites, I do not sign off on at all because it's not really wider when you have just some flexible pad here. It's a wider pad. It adds that effect where the thing is always popping out, really cheapens it, which also probably could have been fixed by lower magnets on it. And ultimately it didn't really feel that much different when you used it with the Elite versus the Standard because again, the only actual framing in here is all the same. So it only adds problems and doesn't really fix any. I would not say get the wider one. The magnetic glasses spacers are a good addition. They make it easy to switch between someone who uses glasses and they just have the same one nubbin on the bottom. And so this part is technically not nubbined at all, but the standard one, it all works pretty well on. And for the price, for the fact they throw in something extra, it is a good deal. So I'll leave a link in the description only to the standard one with those caveats. Make sure you're not buying the wide one. And that's only if you want a budget one that has magnets that's kind of easily swappable. There might be other companies that I know that I really like that may be having facial interfaces coming. So I wouldn't say this is something you have to jump on right now, especially if the stock one is okay for you. Or ultimately, if you're willing to invest a little more money, you have an iPhone and for now you're in the US, you can get the Oblic custom one for your face, but that is like $90. So I'll leave links to that video in case you want to learn more about that and don't get the wide one. Just, just don't, but let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you still rocking the stock one? Have you found one you really like that I haven't tested that you'd like me to test out? I'd love to know. Thank you once again for being here. I'll see you in another reality. I thought we were done from the globular cluster review, but a couple details have come out since then that we would talk about real quick. So one, before I went out of my way to message them, another box showed up in the mail and they said, hey, thanks for your order of our interface and to support us. We recently got customer feedback that the received PU pad got deformed a bit in the box. It seems because the packing box is a bit too small to contain the wider strap. So to provide you the perfect one, we shipped your replacement PU pad free of charge. Now you already saw the final thoughts. I did not like the wide one. I did not recommend the wide one. I'll give them a little extra mark though for going out of their way to try and make sure customers were satisfied. So basically they sent another PU leather pad 
that they're saying should not crease up or whatever. So I think what they're talking about was this weird thing with the edges here, where the box had pushed these in, they tried to stay that way. It felt bad on your face or it made more light bleed. So basically, oh geez, they just sent you an unscrewed up pad in a nice smaller box. Although when you put it on, it is gonna bend it up, but it should avoid the sides getting all messy like they were. I thought that was nice of them to do that. It's, again, I didn't recommend this, but that was cool. Then I had gone on Amazon because I bought these myself and I just messaged them and told them my feedback about the wider facial interface and how it caused issues when you're trying to put it on because this pad up here was causing the whole thing to go jump off of it. And they ended up refunding me for the whole thing and told me to keep it. So unfortunately that doesn't fix the product, but I did want to say that their customer service does seem to be pretty good. They are really wanting people to be happy with the product. Some extra points to them for that. But uh, as I said, just only get the standard one if you're gonna get one of these, not this wider one. But then you won't also have to get an extra package later. Okay, now we're actually done.